In this lesson, we'll walk through a simple Selenium scripting example to monitor the performance of a web app. Let's say we want to ensure that visitors to Wikipedia can log into their account. I want to write a script that loads the site, clicks through to the English version, clicks the login link at the top right corner, and enters text into the username and password fields, then clicks the login button. To create the script, we'll need to go back and configure the web app group we set up in the last lesson and open its workflow. The first step is to add an action to the script. In an action, we'll specify the target, which is the HTML element we want to interact with, and a command, which is how we want to interact with the target. After the script opens Wikipedia, the next step is to locate and click the link to the English language site. Since the action I want to take is a click, I'll search for that in the command field. You'll notice there are a few different options for clicking. In this example, I'll use the click and wait command, which will click the button and wait for the next page to completely load before moving on to the next action. These are all standard Selenium commands, and we have a handy reference guide to the commands on our documentation portal. For the target, there are a number of ways to locate specific HTML elements on a page. The most resilient is to locate it by its ID attribute. In theory, an element's ID should be unique and will remain the same even if the page is rearranged. If I right-click the part of the page I want to interact with and click Inspect, I'm shown the Developer Tools pane with the page HTML. It's automatically focused on the element I right-clicked, and here's the ID for that element. I'll double-click it and copy the ID. Then it's back to the script to paste it into the target. Next, I'll give my milestone a name that describes what it does, and run a preview to make sure it runs successfully. If I've made a mistake, I'll see an error message. In this case, the script couldn't find the target because I left the quote marks in the ID value. So I'll take those out and run the preview again. Here you can see we've got the domain loading and then successfully clicked through to load the English site. OK, let's go back and add our next action to click through to the login screen. I'll add another action with the same click and wait command, pop over to Wikipedia, and inspect the login link to find the ID. This time, I'll copy just the ID value without the quote marks, In the target, I'll type ID equals and paste the ID value. I'll add a descriptive milestone name and run another preview. OK, that looks good. We've clicked through to the login screen. So far, we've used click and wait commands, but to add a username and password, I'll need to type into these fields. I'll use the same process to grab the field ID, and again, remember to omit the quote marks. The difference with this command is that we need to enter a value for what we want to type. Now I'll do the same for the password field. But in this case, I don't actually want to expose my password, so this is where declaring variables comes in handy. I can create a username variable to call in my script, and one for the password. As long as my variable name is the word password, or PWD, the value will be masked. To call the variables in the script, I use a dollar sign and curly brackets around the variable name. Run another preview to confirm it works.
And there, I can see my username and password are typed into the correct fields. The last step is another simple click and wait command to click the login button. So I'll just run through those quick steps. And run a preview to make sure it works. Now in this case, the preview fails because I can't authenticate. And in the screenshot, I see a message that my credentials are incorrect. My next step, if this weren't part of a demo, would be to fix the credentials. So this was a fairly easy example for a couple reasons. One is because Wikipedia includes ID tags in their HTML. If your web app doesn't include ID tags, you can use what's called an XPath to locate specific elements. And how you do that is when you right-click on the element to bring up the developer pane, you can right-click on the HTML code and copy the XPath. Then head back over to the script. And instead of putting ID equals, you can just paste in the XPath. Another reason this is an easy example script is that we took straightforward clicking and typing actions. Depending on your app and the workflow that you want to take, there are many other commands you can use. Open, type, click and wait, those are common actions. There are other commands like mouse over to hover over an element, say if you need to hover over a menu before you can click something within that menu. Or there's verify commands to check that some text or element appears on the screen before you move on to the next step. For more complex scripting, we have a good deal of documentation, including a handy article on resolving common scripting issues. And of course, if you hit a roadblock, you can always reach out to technical support for help. Just make sure to save your script, copy down any error messages you've encountered, and share those details with the support team.